The Honourable Member for Carlton Trail, Eagle Creek. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It is a privilege to rise in my place today and add the voices of my constituents to the debate on Bill C-14, an act to amend the criminal code and to make related amendments to other acts, medical assistance in dying. I want to begin by telling this House that in the almost nine years that I have been a member of this place, I have not been asked about or received as much correspondence as I have on the matter of physician-assisted suicide. It is clear that Canadians and members of this House have varied and deeply held beliefs and convictions on this issue that have been informed by our life experiences. We members also have a responsibility to balance our personal beliefs with those of our constituents and the incredible wealth of knowledge they share with us. The widespread reaction to this short debate in Parliament confirms my belief and the belief, I believe, of my colleagues that physician-assisted suicide represents the defining issue of this Parliament. C-14 will have the most lasting impact on Canadians and the social fabric of our society because each one of us could, at some point, see someone we know struggle with such a decision. My constituents' opinions on this issue have been genuine, considered, and informative, with a clear majority opposing physician-assisted suicide. Through you, Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to inform them that I share their views. I believe in the inviolable, inviolable dignity of all human life and that it is to be protected by law from conception to natural death. Therefore, I have and will continue to oppose any attempt to legalize euthanasia or physician-assisted suicide. I have grave concerns with the process surrounding the introduction and passage of this bill. I am cognizant that C-14 is now at third reading and that many members are still grappling with how they will vote later today. I hope that all members will be able to vote freely, as Conservative members will be able to. Mr. Speaker, this legislation was first introduced in this place on April 14th, less than two months ago. Passing a bill in a month and a half is a challenge under any circumstances, but passing a bill of this magnitude and in this amount of time is reckless and demonstrates a complete disregard for the significance of this issue to all Canadians. As my colleague from Lethbridge noted in her earlier remarks, the Supreme Court of Canada has sent Parliament into an unending abyss of grey, and each day parliamentarians are being tested on the future limits of this legislation as one what-if leads to another. I don't believe that all the impacts of this bill can be assessed in such a tight timeline, as this truly is a new moral space for Canadians to contemplate. Like many of us here, I am concerned that minors may eventually be able to attain medical assistance in dying. I am concerned for the well-being of those struggling through mental illness because, quite frankly, we as a country are only now beginning to recognize and understand its reach and impacts on so many. And I am concerned with the notion that doctors who, for legitimate reasons of faith or conscience, oppose medical assistance in dying will be forced to participate in this process contrary to their personal ethics. While the government has presented us with a bill that is much narrower in scope than the recommendations made by the special committee, stakeholders on both sides of this issue have raised so many what's next questions. These have not been answered, and I am therefore disappointed that consultations and debate on C-14 are ending prematurely. Many of my constituents have suggested that the government should consider using Section 33 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the Notwithstanding Clause, to prevent physician-assisted suicide rather than rushing a bill through Parliament that appears to fully satisfy no one. Again, through you, Mr. Speaker, I want the government and my constituents to know that I would support using the Notwithstanding Clause to prevent the Supreme Court's decision in Carter v. Canada from having any effect. While I am not a constitutional expert, I assume that Section 33 was included in the Charter because the Prime Minister and the Premiers of the day wanted to affirm that a democratically elected federal parliament and provincial legislatures, and not the judicial branch, 
would have the responsibility to pass laws on matters of public policy. By refusing to invoke the notwithstanding clause, the government is prematurely ending our deliberations on this bill and consequently removing many voices from this discussion. Parliament should be passing laws that the courts then interpret within the Charter. Courts should not be telling Parliament what laws it needs to pass and by when they must be passed. I don't believe that former Premier of Saskatchewan, Alan Blakeney, would have signed the Charter without the presence of the notwithstanding clause, as it protected the rights of Saskatchewan's legislature to override a court decision that it may not agree with. Then Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau agreed, and I quote, it is a way that the legislatures, federal and provincial, have of ensuring that the last word is held by the elected representatives of the people rather than by the courts, courts, end quote. Former Prime Minister Jean Chrétien, who was at the time Canada's Justice Minister, made a similar comment. The purpose of an override clause is to provide the flexibility that is required to ensure that legislatures, rather than judges, have the final say on important matters of public policy. If physician-assisted suicide is not an issue for the Parliament of Canada to invoke Section 33, what is? Liberal members have continuously used the June 6th deadline as justification to pass this bill quickly. Yet I would posit that the notwithstanding clause exists precisely so that Parliament, and not the courts, can set the timeline on important matters of public policy. At the very least, Mr. Speaker, the government could have used this clause to give itself more time to consult Canadians and draft legislation that conforms to the court's decision and protects life. Quebec's National Assembly took six years to develop its legislation on physician-assisted suicide, yet the Supreme Court only gave the federal government a total of 16 months to put in place new legislation. Unfortunately, it is clear that using the notwithstanding clause is not an approach that this government would even consider. I will use my remaining time, Mr. Speaker, to address the issue of conscience rights for medical professionals. I believe that opening the door to physician-assisted suicide is a slippery slope for our society, but I believe that it is even more reckless if we fail to protect conscience rights in this legislation. Without adequate pr protection for the conscience rights of medical professionals, this Parliament, and more specifically this current governing party, is inserting the thinnest edge of the wedge when it comes to legislative disregard for conscience rights. If this Parliament fails to respect these rights, we are setting a most dangerous precedent. Precedents matter. Mr. Speaker, you and I might not be in this House or even alive to see the effects that the precedent set by passing C-14 may have, which is why the protection of conscience rights today is so important. I would have expected that most in this place support conscious rights for medical professionals. I took at face value that the government included a mention of conscience rights in the preamble of this bill as an indication of their support for the principle, but the results of last night's vote demonstrated this was not the case. No one is a permanent member or an eternal member of this place. Just like legislatures, legislators in past parliaments, the only lasting effect that we can have on the future is to be clear in our intentions through the laws we pass today. Therefore, it behooves us, it behooves us as members of the 42nd Parliament to be very specific in what is allowed and what is being protected with this piece of legislation. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, our only legacy as a parliament is what we pass into law. We have a responsibility to get this legislation right and ensure that all the issues that have been raised are addressed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.